Well, first of all, you shot for a long time and I presume you collected an awful lot of footage. Um, but was it, fine, was it hard for you to find your narrative or was it obvious from the start what that was going to be? It was never obvious from the start. It was a film which I... Um, which happened because I met two people. It wasn't something I was knocking on their door looking to do initially. Um, but once I had met um, at a wedding, um, two brothers, two Quinn McDonough brothers, it was always going to be following at least one or two of them through this whole world. That was the idea, at least, um, from early on. And that really was the way the film turned out structurally. It ended up uh, being a film which traced 12 years in the lives of these two men, um, one of them who wedding it was when I met him, he was 18 years old and he was 30 at the end of it, and the other, his older brother, who was uh, in his early 40s by the end, so it became kind of like a life story or a cycle in their lives uh, and in the lives of the families uh, they were a member of and few things. But were, I, I was invited in, uh, you know, I went, went to a wedding, he invited me to shoot some footage, met them at the wedding, um, and then and they invited, this family invited me to uh, shoot some uh, training footage of uh, James. and. Uh, and then to along to the fight, and then was the next family I met was the Joyce's after that, um, and I said, look, this is who, this is who I am. This is what I've been doing, and uh, I went down to where they live in uh, the Midlands. And similarly, they were pretty open, and it was a step by step process like that. I think people got to know me and saw what I was doing, um, and then it went on for so long and became really part of the furniture, as it was in some uh, kind of way. Really, um, uh, fair fights, as travellers call them, um, are quite similar to nineteenth century prize fights. Um, which would be bare knuckle, which would go on for a long time, and um, which would be very often outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, they're very structured. They're not. They're organised fights, planned with referees, um, with rules and regulations. And if you um, if you breach one of the rules and regulations, uh, you could get disqualified, which happens. Uh, oh, which happens occasionally, not often. Um, the referees um, are uh, the two referees. Each family brings a referee to a fight. Um, for to represent them really and um, they have to show fair play as they call it they're called fair play men the referees and uh, you can't do things like headbutting you can't hit below the waist um, you know biting basic things uh, which wouldn't be allowed in boxing you can't do in fair fights right. um, and did you ever feel in any physical danger or did you stay back from it it's just it's such a, a wild sport um, there were one or two occasions over a 12 year period where it was pretty intense mm -hmm. and uh, I felt this is really, you know, there, there, there could be danger in the situation. I never felt under particular threat myself or in danger. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose in a funny way when you're filming something like this uh, or really anything, you're behind the camera, you're looking through a lens, you feel as if you're distanced just by that whole thing, you have a camera on your shoulder. Uh, it's a mirage because you know, you're very close to whatever action you're shooting in any case and can get hurt. But I was never hurt. I mean, I, I, might, have, I might have been pushed and joshed a little bit occasionally, um, and once, just once or twice, but I was never hurt. I never really felt in danger. Over the years, I've shot a lot, a lot, a lot of fights. The vast majority of them had no money attached in terms of a prize for the fight. Mm -hmm. And the way it is, it's, you know, each side, would, if, there were, if there was money, each family would put up half the money. So if there, if there was 30,000 uh, euros on a fight, it'd be 15,000 from each family. Um, but for the, ma for the vast majority, there's no money. Um, there might be side bets between, between people, um, which I wouldn't know about, but um, occasionally there's money and occasionally there isn't. And when there is money, it can be quite large mm -hmm. and has been in the, in the film, certainly became quite a lot at the end of it. Um, do you think that money ever drove them? No. Uh, in my film, in my experience, what I've seen, uh, I don't think it was motivated by money. I would say definitely it was not motiva motivated by money. Um, if money came in, that was another issue, uh, but it, wasn't, it certainly wasn't why they were fighting. Okay. Um, in Sundance, I believe Knuckles sold to HBO for a TV series? Well, there was a lot of interest. What happened before uh, Sundance happened? Uh, before Sundance, the, the week before, um, there was a uh, publicity about the film and there was a lot of interest in LA even before Sundance happened and there were various people who were interested in viewing it. Lots of people uh, wanted to view it in the viewing session and um, and then there was interest afterwards and uh, so at the stage it's at now is we are developing you know, in development for a potentially for a series but you know as people probably know it's a very slow process it's step by step and uh, we're at the early stages still. Sundance obviously they reacted really well to it and do you think that like there is an understanding of this away from Ireland obviously did you find that surprising? 
Well, the one thing that I got from an American audience, and I've been to two festivals in America, one in Canada now, and it's a similar um, thing. Um, surprising to me was that there was um, people weren't really that familiar with who Irish travellers were, and I assumed they just made an assumption they they, they would have been. Um, so uh, the fair fighting itself, yeah, that wasn't known. That wouldn't have been known. It would have been a, you know a tradition and a, a part of the country which they wouldn't have been aware of. Mm -hmm. um, so. It was pretty fresh to them, and I think pretty um, pretty surprising to them. But I mean, it was a very good reaction from the audience in Sundance. The way it works in Sundance is the film is uh, the festival's a ten-day festival, or so, and you show your film on six or seven times. So you know you have repeat audiences and repeat repeat screenings, and yeah, it's a really good reaction. I mean, it was what ten, twelve years that you were. Yeah, I started the first fight I did was November nineteen ninety-seven. Uh, although I'd met them before that, so I started shooting before that, uh, a little bit before that. Before that. And the, the climactic fight in the film, um, which wasn't quite the end of the shooting, but that the climactic fight was 2007, and that was in England, and a little bit of uh, shooting after that, so between 10 and 12 years, you could say. And when you showed, I presume you showed them the film when it was completed, what was the reaction to it? The reaction of all the, all the travellers have seen it to date, and there'll be a lot more seeing it over the next week or two, or three. Um, has been really that this is a, a film which explores this, these, this situation over a period of time, and it represents essentially the truth, uh, uh, what happened over that over that period. And I mean, that was the, that's the main thing. That yeah. there was no, you know, it wasn't a quickie thing. It wasn't it wasn't trying to trying to manipulate anything. And uh, that's the reaction I got from them, which is good. And also, people have, have enjoyed it as a film. Where I where I go in the future, completely, who knows? You know, I'd like to make features. I'd like to, certainly lots of other documentary ideas are floating around uh, now, um, so who knows what will happen in the future, I'd like to write as well, so it could be a whole mixed bag.